board. Mm-hmm. This one is between Gadir Gusenov, who yesterday won his game against Rupesh Jaiswal from mm-hmm. Nepal. We have been uh, talking about how Rupesh is the first ever Nepalese player to represent his country at the World Cup. Mm-hmm. And uh, today, uh, he has the black pieces and we see a right choice by him, which is to go for the Sicilian. Sicilian. Finally, some Sicilian. But, after takes and takes, we saw Bishop B5 That's on the board. That's not very common. That is not common. I think... Well, I think, um, again, as white players, I don't think you should go to the main, uh, like, really open main lines of mm. Sicilian. Well, D4 is, but after the continuation with Bishop B5, I think we'll go into some sort of, like, a Maroxy setup of pawns with E4 and C4, like what we saw r- right now in the diagram. Well, um, I am very curious, mm-hmm. Irene. Why can't Black simply snatch a pawn here? Isn't this quite a free pawn that is hanging? I think it is not really free. <laughs> this this type of gambit will always have something behind it, yeah? Mm. So I think... I'm not really familiar with this opening, but I think it should be with, I don't know, castle, and then rook e1, just uh, have full activities, and then attacking. So this is this is something new, actually. Yeah. Because white player, uh, Gusenov here, just needs to have a draw. Yes. But he's not playing for a draw. He's gambiting his pawn, in a hope that her uh, that his opponent will take it, um, but I don't think he will take it. Yeah, Do you he, think? Yeah, I don't think he will. And I think what you suggested makes a lot of sense to castle and put your rook here. But I think there's also a very concrete mm-hmm. way with queen f3, mm-hmm. uh, as the engine points out, hitting the knight, and mm-hmm. also this pawn here when it's very difficult to cling on to your extra material. And whatever there is knight c5, uh, is it possible to play before? Knight c5, trying to defend here, and you are absolutely right. Mm-hmm. I hit your knight, and then I chop this pawn. Yes, so that pawn on e4 is not actually free, yeah? Right, exactly. Uh, also, Irene, I have a question for mm-hmm. you. Imagine you were playing in this World Cup, and mm-hmm. you had a player who was rated 600 points below you. Yes. And you won your first round. Mm-hmm. Would you be looking for a draw, or you would be saying, "Oh, I'm. I want to not lose those rating points." You know, at the end of the day. Um, I would. I would think that. I, I think I would just play um, as normal as I can. Mm. I would not go for a draw for sure. Uh, but if I cannot. Uh, prevent it during the game. Of course, I'll I'll take a draw. But I think it's 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 good to have like a um, positive mindset before the game. Like you just have to play your normal chess. Right. Yeah. You shouldn't really looking forward for any type of result yet. Mm. So just play uh, play your pieces, play your chess, and then the result will come by itself. So. Cool. So right now we see that G six has been played by Rupesh. Uh, he goes here and his opponent is thinking he he's not back on the board and mm-hmm. i think a nice move here he wants to go for the dragon setup with bishop g7 and castles which will give him interesting chances yes um this looks like a dragon type of position yes it's a bit strange though because usually this type of position is like a maroxy bind in a, in the accelerated dragon. Right. But the bishop is now on b5, not on e2. So this is actually a good thing for white mm. because when you have such a position, this setup with maroxy bind, it's best to exchange your light squared bishop. Ah, because these two pawns make up the maroxy bind and they are on light squares. So if you don't have this bishop... It is a better version for mm. white right now. Okay. Yeah. So this one does look good for white. Guseno will put his bishop here. Pawn to f3, maybe a small edge, but we are still early days in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see how it develops. Going to the fifth... We'll, we'll maybe cover this last board, then move on to the women's section. Very well against Gadir Gusenov. Uh, you know, after 26 moves, to have an equal position is not easy. Yes, and to see that the favorite is actually down to 13 minutes versus 29 minutes. So, Gusenov has been taking his time in dealing with such a position. Yes, board number four here between Rupesh Jaiswal and Gadir Gusenov is equal. If Gusenov makes a small error, then maybe Rupesh has some chances. But for now, 
it is equal and yesterday guseno had won so he is mm-hmm. the favorite to move ahead uh on the in the tournament but he still needs about four moves to make in order to offer a draw <laughs> if he wants the shortcut but obviously i think his opponent wouldn't take uh the offer and then we'll just keep fighting on yeah and also i was thinking what is the way in which black can continue he has two pawn pushes one is to push the pawn to a5 to weaken this structure the other is to push the pawn to f4 mm mm-hmm. Yep, but be careful with pushing the pawn, especially the f4 pawn, because that might be um, weak mm. in the future. So you have to, yeah, you have to calculate. You have to take into account all possible scenarios. But it means that if you push it like this, then the the c5 yeah. pawn is Just, kind of hanging. Yeah. Yeah, you can't take it right away because e5 the, yes. hangs. but then you could weaken this pawn as well and then try to take some mm-hmm. c5 so so there's some c- concrete calculation to be made yes and right now rupesh is thinking about it and he seems to be doing well he can be actually quite happy about the way he has played in this tournament he fought well yesterday mm-hmm. and today also he is doing quite well um there gusenov yes i yes. think uh, this is a very commendable performance on board number 2 uh, board number 4 4 board number 4 of the open rupesh has managed to sort of fight on mm-hmm. the game still is equal could end in a draw mm-hmm. most likely will end in a draw but uh, he's played 48 moves uh, nearly 4 hours yes and that's a good job that he's done Yes, and to hold such a strong player, Gusenov is almost twenty-seven hundred now, and yeah, look at that. I think he will be through to the second round. Yeah, so Gadir Gusenov will make it, but a lot to be happy uh, for Rupesh. He's played well. There's a game between Rasmus. Sw- I see you've got a, a game between Gusenov against uh, Jaiswal. So yeah, again, we, we see a big rating disparity between the two players. Kisenov has a massive rating of 26.61 and uh, Jaiswal 21.22. And Simon, since you're practicing on your flag game, can you tell me where Jaiswal Rupash is from? Okay, without looking, I think um, it is Burma, right? Is that right? Is that the old country? Of... <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea, Simon. Uh, it's near. It's near. Let me say that again. Near Burma, but a bit more mountainous. Um, a place where I once wanted to go and find my soul, and um, you know, climb some mountains. Nepal. It's Nepal, right? Nepal. Yeah, Nepal. I think it's uh-huh. yeah. And to be honest, I don't know any chess players from Nepal except. Obviously, Anish Giri has um, a bit of an important background from that area, doesn't he? he he's got, uh, yeah. yeah, I think I don't know what side of his family is from. His father. His, his father. His father is yeah. Nepalese. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so there you go. And um, obviously, Keshinov is from Azerbaijan, and uh, he has the home advantage. And we just uh, we thought we'd quickly have a look at this one. I think we've got the cameras on the players here, and. Um, uh, It's a game where Black needs to win, so we won't we won't spend too too much time here. Um, as um, Gashinov won yesterday in in a very nice match, f5 played, and we can just have a quick update about the position. Uh, to my eyes, Yvankar, it, it kind of just looks like White is doing pretty well here. This is actually a very standard middle game position, right? Yeah, it, uh, to my eyes as well. Now White has a space advantage. There's a lot of tension brewing in the center. It's not going to be beneficial for Black to go pawn takes pawn because once that happens, well, first of all, the bishop on e5 is going to fall off. So that's uh, strike that one from the equation. But uh, even if you were to move that bishop, still White would have uh, two wonderful pawns on d5 and c5, and you would have lengthened the scope of the bishop on d2. So this pawn trade isn't really up Black's alley. So instead, Black is just to wait and see. And if you're in a must-win situation and the the position requires you just to sit and wait, well, that's not great news. 
to put it mildly. Yeah, it, it, it's true. I mean, like the the only chance I guess Black can get in these things is getting enough pressure to actually try and prove that these pawns, especially the C5 pawn, is more of a weakness than a strength. Um, I mean, I would imagine this pawn is always a strength. I mean, even just pushing it onto C6 at the right moment looks pretty logical, logical to me. I mean, I thought White might have put the rook on C4 to be really safe because then everything is defended. Uh, and then just play c6 and try to like um, come through like that. Black now lines up against that pawn, but again, he's not threatening to take it because the bishop will drop. And um, black's still okay, but in a must win situation, not an ideal, uh, not an ideal uh, position to be in. Okay, but it's also maybe not the most exciting game, so let's, let's try and find something with a bit more action. I'm wondering about that crazy game we had. Uh, a minute ago, you've anchored if any more moves have been played there, because I, I was very much enjoying uh, that one in the, the crazy Sicilian. Um, and we could oh, see Sats the and sacrifice Kozul. The sacrifice. Yeah. Kozul. I'll just have a quick look to see if any more moves have been played, because if not, we'll find something else. And uh, let's have a look. Well, okay. I was kind of interested in, yeah? Okay, so we do have some moves. It was good, and we could just again go to this position quite briefly. Um, White only needing a draw in this game, the Gashinov game. We've got cameras on them. You should be able to see them in the background there. Uh, with a position that's... I mean, we thought White was doing well here, but to be fair, Rupesh is doing a great job from the pool. Um, he needs to win this position, so it's not going to be easy. But he's still holding it quite well, and Gashinov is getting a bit short of time. So... Um, this game's not over yet. Uh, it's yes. not clear how White uses these pawns. It's, it's true. Uh, but Black has to take a step backwards if he wants to put pressure on c5. And uh, we see in terms of clock situation, Gusenov, he's the one with just over five and a half minutes. But uh, okay, Gusenov in a, a comfortable position. And after having won yesterday's game, all he needs is a draw to progress through. The thing is that I really like to look at uh, Simon, other people who need to win. And yeah. I, some some big names needing to win. Um, some of them were um, French, uh, French Berkis, master from Hungary. Bobby Chang, the grandmaster from Australia is also in a must win situation, but maybe the bar is in their favor. Well, let's, let's go and have a look. I mean, we also, there were some other exciting um, uh, games going on. I think in this position, someone mentioned the idea of sacrifice and exchange. I totally agreed that that'd be one of my first thoughts here, to take that bishop off to try and break down Black's defences. But the, the reason that maybe uh, White hasn't done that is because, you know, of the match situation. He only needs to draw. He doesn't want to risk it. But, um, yeah, OK, we, we will go and have a look at some of the other ones that's going on. I mean, Black is a long way... Uh, away from winning at the moment, but we'll see if there's any big developments there. Uh, wasn't there an really interesting? I mean, there's so many games going on, it's quite hard to remember uh, which ones we should keep our eyes closely on. But um, well, let it me does know. look like I had a yeah, quick sorry. peek at the Berkes game, and it looks like. And uh, he did actually sacrifice the exchange, so um, uh, we were thinking this might might have been a very good idea if we just go back to where we were before. This is the game that White only needs to draw. He looks very confident on the camera there, doesn't he? Really confident. And, and I noticed that a couple of people in the chat were also pointing out the idea of rook takes e5. Because this bishop is kind of the glue in the position that's holding everything together for, for black. So White breaks through by, first of all, getting his pieces to the best squares he can. And look at that double exclamation mark, rook takes e5 a really strong move and yeah. okay we'll keep going and see where we stand white getting two pawns now for the exchange and here bishop e3 i can understand that black wants to eliminate that pawn but now the white rook comes in and it's white to move here uh White only needs a draw in his position. I mean, one thing I would say, Ivanka, the Blacks played excellently here just to 
get some chances, right? I mean, you're outrated by a serious amount of uh, points, Rupesh, and he's been defending quite a tough position. And okay, the, he, he's he shouldn't be better here, but at least he's got some sort of unbalanced position with the extra exchange and the ending. I, I think he, I think he's played well today. I think he has played well today, but unfortunately, he needs to win. Such is the scenario. He lost yesterday, so. Gusenov, he's doing what grandmasters do best. Move the rook back to e4, make sure it can't be chased down. And his plan is very simple. He's just going to back it up with b5. After the trade of pawns, he's going to try to get that c pawn through to the eighth row. And just, yeah, trying to queen. You use that extra pawn that you've got. Um, I don't, I don't know what happens if it's just two rooks versus rook and bishop. Is that supposed to be a draw, you vanker? I don't know. I, I assume it else. is. I imagine I, so. I assume it depends. Like maybe it depends on where, what corner your king is in. If it's the same colour as your bishop, then you might be in trouble. But um, I do have some news though, because earlier on we were looking at the games between uh, Harsha. <laughs> Thank you.